In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the health topic, which is one of the global issues that appears in Section 3 of the National Five Geography Exam Paper. It is an optional topic, and therefore you should check with your teacher to ensure that you have studied it. If you are going to answer this topic, then it will appear as the very last question in the global issues section of the exam paper. Now, the health topic is made up of three key themes. The first of these is being able to describe a global distribution of one of the diseases or something that relates to health. There are four main learning outcomes, and the first one is being able to use a map to describe the global distribution. The second is being using a map to describe the global distribution of malaria. And the third is using a map to describe the global distribution distribution of heart disease. The final learning outcome is also describing the global distribution using a map. However, in this case, it might be a key health indicator, for example, life expectancy. In the second main theme, you need to be able to use a graph to describe a pattern of change or a trend. Now, this could very well be a line graph or a bar graph. As you can see, there are also four key learning outcomes here. The first three relate to the different diseases. So, for example, a graph to showing you the change in HIV or AIDS, a graph showing you the change in a developing world disease, for example, malaria, or a graph showing you the pattern of change for a disease in the developed country, for example, heart disease. The final one is using a graph to describe a pattern of change for a key health indicator. Once again, that could be life expectancy. The final theme relates to explaining the causes of one of the three main diseases that you have studied. This could be the causes of HIV or AIDS. It could be the causes of malaria, or it could be the causes of heart disease. And you'll notice malaria is a developing world country or developing country disease, and heart disease is a developed country disease. So that is the causes. Linked to that is also explaining, in this case, it's the impacts of a disease. Once again, we have the three diseases that you will have studied. You will need to know the impacts of HIV and AIDS. You'll also need to have studied the impacts of a disease in the developing world, for example, malaria. And finally, the impacts of a disease uh, in the developed world, for example, heart disease. Impact is another word for the consequences or the effects of a disease. And in this case, that would be on a country or people that live in those countries. Lastly and finally, we can see the explain command word again. and This time, it is methods used to limit the spread of a disease. This might also be seen as the solutions to the disease. And as with the other two explain themes, you have to do your three diseases again. So what are the methods used to limit the spread of HIV? What are the methods used to limit the spread of your developing country disease? For example, malaria, once again. And what are the different methods used to limit the spread of your disease for your developed country. So, for example, that might be heart disease. Now that we've looked at the main learning outcomes, let's explore some key exam questions. In the exam, the global issues exam questions are divided into a four-mark describe question and a six-mark explain question. In this example, we are being asked to describe the pattern of HIV and AIDS. And it is a four mark question. So we'll be looking to come up with four points that effectively describe in detail the actual distribution of this disease. This question could be a map showing you the spread or distribution of malaria or cholera, or it could be one of the diseases like asthma or heart disease from the developed world. It could also be a health indicator like life expectancy or infant mortality. So how do you go about answering one of these questions? Well, the first thing to do is to try to identify a global pattern. For example, in the global region of the Northern Hemisphere, we can see that HIV is, for most countries, under 1% of the population with HIV infection. In contrast, in the developing world, for example, in Africa, we can see HIV rates ranging as high as over 10%. That would be a global pattern. You would look, then look to start to break down the pattern into different continents. 
For example, you might identify that almost all of South America has HIV rates of under 1%. I've said almost there because there are a couple of countries in the northeastern corner that are between 6 to 10%, and you might want to actually point that out. In Europe, we can see that almost the whole of Europe has HIV rates, infection rates of under 1%, once again, with the exception of a few in the northeastern corner, which have between 1% to 5%. In this map, it would be definitely worthwhile talking about Africa, and the reason for Africa is there is a great degree of rate variation. So you might identify that the sub-Saharan region of Africa, as well as the southern region, have HIV infection rates of over 10% in some cases. In the northern part, the northern coast of Africa, however, HIV infection rates are either not available or are under 1%. The key in this answer is identifying specific areas of continents potentially naming countries if they are an exception to the general rule. For example, India has no data compared to the rest of Asia, which is under 1%. And giving information from the key to support your comments on the map. As with the previous question, this is also a described question, and it is also worth four marks. Some of the rules that apply to describing a pattern on a map are similar to those when it comes to describing a graph. Your graph could be showing you changes in the amount of a particular disease that you've studied. That could be HIV, a developed world disease or a developing world disease. Or it could be a graph showing you some other key health indicators like changes in life expectancy in a country over time. So how do you answer this question? Well, first of all, you must make sure you have four points. And I would suggest before I start giving you some ideas, you maybe practice writing an answer to this question and see how it matches up with my comments. Okay, assuming you've maybe practiced this question, I would suggest the first disease you probably want to talk about is Liberia and its infection rates for Ebola. Why Liberia? Because it is the one that currently is the highest. To answer this, you might say, round about the 1st of July, there were almost no cases in Liberia. However, the number of Ebola cases rose rapidly in Liberia up to 2,500 by the 1st of October. We then might pick Guinea. Why would we pick Guinea? Because it was the country in which infection cases for Ebola first appeared. So we might say the number of cases in Guinea started much earlier on the 1st of April with only around about 50 or certainly less than 100 Ebola cases. It steadily rose until roughly the 1st of September. Now, what you'll notice here is I've not gone to the end of the line because there is a steady rising to the 1st of September, after which point you'll notice the line increases slightly more rapidly. So you might then go on to say the number of cases in Guinea rose a bit sharper after the 1st of September, rising to just under 1,000 by the 1st of October. In comparison, you might say that Sierra Leone had cases that were f had cases that arrived far later, didn't have its first case until the 1st of July. However, the number of cases rap rose rapidly compared to Guinea and overtook Guinea on the 1st of October, currently lying at 1,200 cases. There has to be four comments. It's likely you're going to discuss all three diseases in this case. You're going to want to pick up key dates and also identify any changes when something changed in the pattern of infections. And finally, and most importantly, you must be using data from the graph itself in your answer to highlight the points that you're making. These next set of exam questions all deal with the explain command word and they will always be worth six marks in the global issue exam question. Explaining requires you to give reasons for whatever it is you're being asked to do. In this case, it is the causes. Now, you will have studied one of these three developed world diseases, and therefore you should be offering six reasons that explain the cause of the disease you have studied. What I suggest you do now is bullet point out quickly what are six possible causes of the developed world disease you've studied. I'd also recommend you do the same for the developing world disease 
as well as HIV and AIDS. If you have bullet points for each of those three diseases and six bullet points that explain the causes, then you should be able to answer this question. Points you might make for heart disease as an example of one of the diseases might include that people that drink heavily are more likely to suffer from heart disease, issues like smoking or diet or stress or hereditary, meaning people have inherited it from their family, are also reasons for why you're more likely to die from heart disease. Of course, you would have to explain the link between the cause, in this case, for example, a poor diet, and why that means you're more likely to catch heart disease. And I'd suggest you review your notes that all of the points you make, you could explain. In this second example of an explained question, we can see we are being asked to explain, in this case, the impact of the disease we've studied. Now, we are reminded in this question of one of the, of the four developing world diseases. We will have only, or you will have only, studied one of these four. And you must be clear on which one you have studied. And the impact means how the disease is affecting the population and the country itself. Now, it's a six-mark question, so you'll be looking for six different impacts your disease is having. For example, if you said malaria was causing children to be ill and miss school, you would then want to explain that this means they're going to miss out on their education, impacting on their future. That would be how to develop a point into a full extended explanation. You should also be able to do the same for the three developed world diseases, as well as HIV and AIDS. Because it is likely, if you see the impact question, it could be for any one of the three diseases you've studied. In this final example of an exam question, once again, we can see it is an explain question, and it is worth six marks. This question is an example of one that is focusing on a disease in the developed world, and we can see the three diseases listed for us. Once again, as with the developing world, you will have only studied one of these three. As this is a question on how to manage the disease or the solutions to the disease, you'd be looking to make six possible points to get the six marks available. You should therefore make sure when you revise, you have six comments you can make or examples of solutions being done in countries around the world to try to tackle the disease you have studied. You might be asked to answer a very similar question. Instead of it being developed world, it might be for the developing world or for HIV and AIDS. So you should prepare an answer for six marks for each of the three diseases you have studied. In summary, in answering a health topic question, you are likely to encounter two sub-questions. The first will be describing either a map or a graph, and the map or graph will relate to one of the diseases you have studied or a health indicator. The second question will be a six-mark question that involves explaining something about your disease. The explanations will either be on the causes of the disease, the impacts of the disease, or how the disease can be managed. You should therefore make sure that for your three diseases, that is HIV and AIDS, the developed world disease you've studied, and the developing world disease you've studied, you can write six points to go with each of those three points. Causes, impacts, and how the disease is managed. What I suggest you do is use the SQA Past Papers website, and access some of the questions on the global issues topic going back in time, practice your answers, write them out under time conditions, and then use the mark schemes available on the SQA website to check if your answers were correct.